Welcome. With me today is Dr. Holger Zelentin of the Department of Theology and Religious Studies here in the University. And he's going to try and answer the question, why should we study the Talmud? Holger, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Um, why should we study the Talmud? Uh, anybody answering that question, I wouldn't trust. There's too many reasons. It's too complex of a text. It is actually too exciting, I think, to, to fit into one answer. So I will try and answer um, this question in a way that uh, builds my own research. And I will say, well, let's look at the Talmud as a text that should be studied because it is very funny. Okay, now, okay. That's a, that is an unusual way of approaching a religious text. To, to say the least. And um, I would say it is uh, a text uh, that needs to be studied most of all on its own terms. The Talmud is um, uh, a text as we have it, which was redacted in 5th, 6th century Babylonia, as the rabbi says, in Iraq. And the uh, rabbis uh, did um, give us this, this wonderful gift. Uh, but there's quite a bit of work to be done to understand it. It is a legal commentary. Now, it's the most complex and most abstract form of literature you can have. It uh, tells you how to live a Jewish life in all its complexity, for all its um, details, how to eat, how to have sex, how to have children, how to raise children, how to react to the government. The entire life is in there and is mostly legal commentary. But in between that legal commentary, we do find narratives. And this is my personal inroad here. We do find narratives of rabbis, and we do find uh, a genre that uh, does fit the modern concept of parody and of satire. Parody being a retelling of a previous story with a difference, satire being comical criticism, and the Talmud combines both. They tell satirical parodies, the rabbis, uh, that do make a very, very serious religious point. And that's, I think, something that uh, I want to preface when I say it is funny. It is funny, but it is funny for that serious uh, um, outcome. And these uh, laughing matters aren't uh, to be laughed at, so to speak. Okay. Now, um, how is the Talmud funny and how can we in learn from it as a funny text? I would say we need to start with the law. We need to start with, um, for example, Rabbi Jeremiah and the limits of parody. Rabbi Jeremiah uh, is a figure who time and again tries to push uh, rabbinic wit to its limits. And he is the one who eventually gets kicked out of the academy because he overdoes it. Um, and he does it by means of imitating religious discourse to the wrong end. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, the discussion at hand in the Talmud is if you find a little bird, to whom does it belong? If there's a dovecot, uh, and if you find it within a certain distance from a dovecot, you um, have to return it to the owner. If it's beyond that certain distance, well, it's yours. Uh, the rabbis then go on and say, well, what if it's uh, a little bird that cannot fly? Then they change the distance. If it is uh, the next question they ask is, well, how about if there are two dovecots? And again, they say, well, whoever you find it closest to. Um, and then Rabbi Jeremiah comes in and says, well, what if it is exactly in between two dovecots, one foot here and one foot there? Talking about a little pigeon or a little bird. And the rabbis kick him out of the academy for that question. Now, it's odd because in other cases, the rabbis do discuss things in such minute matter and with such, uh, uh, say, neglect of practical reality, co fully um, enclosed in a legal reality, that you would say, well, it's a perfectly legitimate question. What, what do you do if you find it exactly in the middle? Why does Rabbi Jeremiah kick, get kicked out? And But if you go back and look at the broader uh, narratives about Rabbi Jeremiah, you see that he's always a jester. He tries to f put things ad absurdum, not for the sake of narrative, which would be legitimate, but for the sake of poking fun. And at some point, he asks his master uh, something, wants to make him laugh, and the Talmud says the master did not laugh. <laughs> so uh, it's a very serious matter here, and getting kicked out of the academy is, is a serious matter. He gets eventually readmitted. But um, so the Talmud itself does have a very uh, nuanced way of approaching comedy and approaching narratives that uh, do play with r rabbinic uh, norms, 
but with a certain limit. You can't go further than that. And the Talmud tells you that by telling a story in best Talmudic matter of Rabbi Jeremiah getting kicked out. So the um, uh, question here is, do we need to understand the comedy inherent to this? And I would say absolutely. Rabbi Jeremiah uh, we need, uh, is, some, is a jester, and we need to understand the joke. We need to actually be complicit in the joke mm -hmm. in order to understand the punishment. But at the same time, uh, parody can be also used in order to maintain religious discourse. And there's another wonderful example. Uh, this comes from the Palestinian Talmud, uh, where a rabbi comes from Babylonia, the new center from, from Iraq, uh, and uh, has actually dared to uh, intercalate the year. So to, to um, change the, uh, the lunar and the solar calendar are, of course, not overlapping. And once in a while, the Jewish ritual year needs to be adjusted to the solar calendar for the festivals to fall on the right day. Now, this is a very important function because if there's disagreement, you can't have the holidays on the same day. Now, a rabbi comes from uh, Babylonia, has dared to intercalate, while rabbinic authority has been established in Palestine, the, in the land of, um, uh, in Eretz Israel, in the land of the rabbis, of which, of course, claim superiority over Babylonia. And um, the rabbis then say, well, how is it that you dare to uh, intercalate the year in Babylonia? And then they start quoting scripture. And what they say is, the Torah shall go out from Babylonia and the word of God from Nahapekod, a place in Babylonia. And you're like, mm -hmm. what is this? That's not scripture. And the, the emissaries from Babylonia say, well, no, 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 this is not how we say it. The Torah says, the Torah shall go out from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem, or something like that, not exactly. Mm -hmm. But you see that um, the, uh, the rabbis here have misquoted Torah in order to drive home a point in a funny way. They put something in the mouth of their Babylonian uh, opponents as if the usurpation of uh, power by Babylonian rabbis is akin to rewriting the Torah. And the mechanism they use is parody. They retell the scripture, emphasizing difference. They're emphasizing that the Torah now is, is apparently proclaimed not in Zion, not in Jerusalem, but in Babylonia, in an insignificant little village far away in the periphery. So I would say anybody reading this uh, needs to understand the comical aspect and needs to somehow relive the moment of uh, satire in order to understand the religious message behind it, the very serious religious message, which is the Torah is based in Eretz Israel, in Jerusalem, in Palestine. Could we generalize from that in this way? Most people reading ancient religious texts do so with a very serious, very grave demeanor. And yet you're saying that a major religious text, a text to which vast amounts of energy have been devoted down the centuries by scholars, that, that actually one has to approach this text not just with the reverence uh, that, 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 one, that one, but one has, to, one has to be aware that it has laughter, parody, indeed comedy within it. Absolutely, and I would say for the case of the Talmud, the most important uh, lesson to be learned is that the modern uh, distinction between seriousness and lightheartedness, light mm. comedy, is not applicable to the Talmud. Whenever the Talmud is comic, its serious concerns overrule the comic aspects. And I think uh, in order to understand its seriousness, the comedy needs to be appreciated. But those are two, not two separate things. Can I push you? That modern distinction between the serious and the comic, does that is that something that we could apply more generally to ancient religious texts? Uh, to many, not to all. I think it is absolutely the case for rabbinic texts. It is the case for some Greek texts. Uh, it is the case, I would say, for some Christian texts even, but here it is a very different discourse. In Christianity, we have Syriac and Greek church fathers actually engaging comic discourse very critically, and they're trying to drive out comedy. Mm -hmm and do re you make recourse to it only very marginally. At the same time, we do have comical Christian texts from, from rather early on. 
So I would say uh, we need to be open to comic elements in all religious texts. Uh, we need to listen if they are ever there, and in the Talmud they're quite well developed. But we shouldn't assume any odd little phrase to be comic to begin with. We need to keep things at bay and not uh, pull out the baby with the bathwater. Comedy is there. We need to um, be able to understand it. But we also need to look at cultural difference. And we need to look at the very specific discourse about the comic in each religion. I think the traditions themselves give you the key that you need to unlock mm. the secrets of ancient comedy. And the Talmud does that, I think, in a very enjoyable way, and in a way that uh, unlocks the secrets of the Talmud, but also of ancient culture more broadly. Holger, thank you very much. <laughs>